Welcome to Learn at Ease. In this video, I will explain in detail the signaling of insulin that causes the GLUT4 to mobilize and fuse with the cell membrane of the target cell. So let's get started. First, let us understand the basics of insulin circulation. The essential organs required to understand the mechanism are shown here. When glucose enters the digestive system from diet, it enters the blood and circulates throughout the body, this activates beta cells of islets of Langerhans of pancreas to release insulin into the blood. Insulin will travel in the blood and bind to its receptor on the target cell, which is muscle cell or it can be adipocyte. Insulin will then pass the signal to the vesicle containing glucose transporter, that is GLUT4, to mobilize and fuse with the cell membrane. Now, this GLUT4 will allow glucose from blood to enter the cell. This video will explain this mechanism in detail. Other signals are also sent inside the cell that induces, glycogen synthesis, anabolism, growth, etc. which I will explain in my upcoming videos. Briefly, when glucose enters the blood, it will activate beta cells of islets of Langerhans to release insulin, which will then enter the blood and reach the target tissue. In this case target cells considered are adipocytes and myocytes. Vesicle containing GLUT4 in in the cytoplasm and the insulin receptor is a transmembrane protein which has two alpha subunits and two beta subunits is shown. Insulin will bind to the alpha subunit which is located on the exterior of the cell. This will cause the activation of the receptor. Here the detailed mechanism of receptor activation is shown. The insulin receptor is a heteromeric protein having 320 kilo Dalton molecular weight. The cytosolic region of beta subunit possesses several tyrosine residues. When insulin binds to the receptor, the alpha subunits will drive the change in the conformation of beta subunits, this causes autophosphorylation of various tyrosine residues in the beta subunit. Thus, the tyrosine residues will become phosphotyrosine, which will then act as second messengers. Due to these phenomena, insulin receptor is also categorized as autophosphorylating tyrosine kinase receptor. Let's get back to the original animation. So form tyrosine phosphate will drive the phosphorylation of insulin receptor substrate 1. Once the IRS1 is activated in this way, an enzyme, phosphatidylinositol 3 kinase will bind to it and get activated. Let us see this mechanism in detail, IRS1 and PI3K is shown here. PI3K possess a protein domain named SH2, which is SRC homology 2 domain. As an additional information, SRC homology 2 domain is a structurally conserved protein domain contained within the SRC oncoprotein. Protein containing SH2 domain dock to phosphorylated tyrosine residues on other proteins. The SH2 domain will aid PI3K to bind with IRS1, and it will cause its activation. The activated PI3K will act on phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate and phosphorylates it. This will cause its conversion to phosphatidylinositol 3,4,5-trisphosphate, abbreviated as PIP3. Another enzyme, 3-phosphoinositide-dependent protein kinase 1 abbreviated as PDK1 will bind to PIP3 and gets activated. Activated PDK1 will recruit protein kinase B and phosphorylates it. This is the wonderful mechanism carried by PDK1 and let us see this mechanism in detail. Here PIP3 and PDK1 is shown, PDK1 possesses pH domain by which it can bind to PIP3, as an additional information, the term stands for plextrin homology domain and it consists of approximately 120 amino acids. pH domain occurs in a wide range of proteins involved in intracellular signaling or as constituents of the cytoskeleton. There is another domain in PDK1, that is kinase domain, when PDK1 binds to PIP3, its kinase domain will get activated, it will then recruit protein kinase B and phosphorylates it. Phosphorylated PKB will promote clathrinated movement of GLUT4. This will cause the secretory vesicles containing GLUT4 to migrate and fuse with the cell membrane. This will ultimately cause the GLUT4 to get embedded in the cell membrane by which glucose molecules from blood can enter into the target cell. In this way, 
all the excess glucose from blood will be localized into these target tissues and the glucose concentration in blood is reduced to the normal levels. Research has shown that knockout mice that are heterozygous for GLUT4 develop insulin resistance in their muscles as well as diabetes. Thus, any abnormality in this mechanism may lead to diabetes. Hope you enjoyed learning this mechanism. In my next videos I will explain insulin signaling that modulates processes like glycogenesis and growth. To know more about this wonderful mechanism, stay tuned to my channel. Hope you enjoyed my video and feel free to share, like and comment. Subscribe to LAE. See you soon.